Hey Ottawa, Kevin here with the Feely Group at eXp Realty and we're back again for our monthly market update where like always we take a look at where the market is this year and compare it to where it was last year and then we dive even deeper and we take a look at what has been going on month by month over the past year and what we're expecting to see in a couple months going forward. Now I'd like to say a big question on everybody's mind is what is going on with the mortgage rates. So I just finished shooting a video as well with Eric Fabian from the Ottawa Mortgage Shop. I highly recommend watching that video because it's going to play into what is going on with the real estate market on the market trends. So average price of the city right now, 603,000. That's up 3% from the same time last year. The sold to list price ratio is 97.3%, which is down 0.06% from the same time last year. The units sold, we saw 1,187 homes sell in October 2023. That's down about 4.5% from the same time last year. And the days on market, the average home is selling in about 34 days. That's up 13.5% over the same time last year. Overall, we haven't seen a significant change across the board of October 2023 versus October 2022. So now when we actually look at the months of inventory though, we are going to see a significant change. So the total inventory, we saw 3,062 homes for sale at the end of October. That's up 16.7% from the same time last year. The months of inventory is up 22.58% and we're sitting at 3.8 months of inventory right now. Meaning if no more homes come to market, it's going to take about 3.8 months for us to sell out at the current rate of selling. The new listings, we saw 1,895. That's up 6.6 over the same time last year. Another thing to note when we're taking a look at the active listings, we haven't seen this many active listings in the month of October in more than five years. Active listings were 43% above the five-year average and 10.9% below the 10-year average for the month of October. When we're doing these market updates, the inventory is the most important number to follow. It's what dictates what is going to happen in the market going forward. Over the last couple of years, supply has been so low that the sellers have had all the power. Buyers have been fighting over that low supply. The inventory increasing is showing a shift in the market where the power is now being switched to the buyer, meaning that buyers have more choices and sellers have to do more to stand out to actually get their home sold. And now when we take a look at the average price of the homes and the rest of the stats, you'll see that we're only starting now to see the effects of the increased inventory, but I think that we're gonna see the further effects in the coming months. So here's the average price of the home over the last 12 months. You can see that the average price actually went up from January all the way to April, where it held steady from April, May, June, and July, only to decrease in August, back up in September, and then down in October. And this is where I'm saying, if you take a look at the average price, you aren't really seeing what we're expecting to see in the market, because the inventory has only grown over the last couple of months, and I think that we're starting to see the effects going forward. Now I wanna take a look at the average price of a home over the last three years, where they're layered on top of each other. I wanna take a look at this graph, because the one I'm gonna show you next is gonna be the units sold. So here we have the average price of a home, and you can see that it has fluctuated significantly over the years and over the months, but where we're sitting today, we're sitting just above where we were at the same time last year and the year before. So now let's take a look at the units sold with the years layering on top of each other again, this time looking at 2023, 2022, 2021, and 2019. We left out 2020 as that was an outlier, but if you look right now, in October of this year, we sold just a little fewer homes than we did the same time last year. But if you compare that to 2021 and 2019, you'll see that we're selling about 40% less homes in October now versus when we were then. Now this is important to factor in when we remember from the intro where we talked about the inventory being the highest it's been in over five years in October, with the sales also being the lowest it's been. So while the average price in October was sitting above 2021 and 2022, I am expecting to see the market adjust and prices take a little decrease here. And I say that because I'm watching the numbers, but also because of these other stats that I have that show the average price week by week. Now here we take a look at the average sale price by week. And if we take a look at the light blue line of 2023, you'll see that the average price has dropped over the last three weeks. And we now currently sit under the 2021 and 2022 prices. Now I wanna pause for a second. 
because everything I've been saying has been talking about how we're going to see the average home price go down. And while I do believe that is true, we're going to see that in November and December, I want to take a look at this graph and look at the first 12 weeks of the last five years. Now what you're going to notice here is the average price increases every single year around this time. Now I know this year we're dealing with interest rates and inventory higher than usual, but what's happening right now in the market and what I'm expecting to see is that a lot of these homes that are on the market right now are still priced significantly higher than what the homes are selling for now. And while some of these sellers are going to need to sell and they're going to need to drop their prices, we're also going to see a lot of sellers opt to not sell and cancel their listings, either staying where they are or renting out their home. Now this is going to cause a decrease in inventory, which flips again the supply and demand in the other direction. So people always ask me, Kevin, when is the best time to buy? And you know I'm a numbers guy, I like to follow the stats. And every single year, the average price is lowest in December and January. But that doesn't mean it's the best time to buy because typically there are a lot less homes on the market. Meaning if your goal is to just get the cheapest house possible, then those times are always the best time to buy. But if your goal is to get the best house for you, sometimes it isn't the best time to buy because you don't have options. And typically people wait to the spring when there's more inventory and they have more options. But we also typically see the average home price go significantly higher in the spring. So now when we look at it and we see, okay, we have higher inventory than we usually see this type of year, we see sales declining, we see average price declining, now might actually be one of the best times to buy. For those of you who have watched my videos in the past, you know that I've never actually said anything like that. So if this is the first time you're watching my video, no, I don't give a sales pitch and say it's a great time to buy every time. But when we're looking at the inventory increase, we're seeing the sales decrease, and also what we're seeing day to day in the marketplace with our buyers right now. We're seeing a lot of buyers getting homes significantly under asking, significantly less than what they will be going for in the near future. And also, like I mentioned in the beginning, we just shot a video of the interest rates where we have seen the fixed rate come down and we may see it come down further. So is now the best time to buy? Maybe I'll back up and say now's the best time to start looking and thinking about it. Running the numbers on your mortgage, taking a look at the homes on the market, and most importantly, everyone, please follow what the homes are actually selling for because we are seeing a big difference between what homes are listed for and the actual sale prices right now. So you might be very surprised to see what these homes are going for in your neighborhood compared to what they're listed for and what you know the sale prices to be in the recent past. And again, for my end disclaimer, we're talking about the average price of a home across all property classes, across all neighborhoods in the city of Ottawa and the surrounding areas. So different markets and different types of homes are not following these trends. However, we are seeing more and more property classes and more and more neighborhoods start to follow these trends. So if you want to know specifically of what's going on in a certain type of property that you're interested in, you can always send me a message or put it in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys found some value and I'll see you on the next one.